Hello world! We are here to reveal the most important and influential person on Cointelegraph's first ever top 100 list. He grew up in a small village without electricity or running water. He is 99.99999% sure we are all living in a simulation. And his favorite color is black. And the number one spot goes to... I'm so excited! Sissy from Binance. Oh, really? Um, thank so you my, so much. My, <laughs> I'm really honored. <laughs> I spoiled the surprise, maybe. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, my first question is, what is that you are particularly personally proud of uh, having done in the previous year, 2019? First of all, thank you for ranking me as the number one. I'm really, really honored and I'm really flattered. Um, I think I got chosen probably because what Binance did and what the Binance team did. So I think the thing that I'm most proud of is really just leading the team and well, just bringing the team together. Um, um, and just sort of uh, uh, constructing that team, keeping the team together, setting a, a very rough general direction, and then um, um, just making sure everyone's going in the same direction. Um, in terms of the real execution work, I really didn't do that much. Um, but 2019, uh, Binance did a lot. Uh, Binance uh, as a platform, uh, from the IEO in January to uh, Binance Chan in February, Binance Dex in April, margin in May, June-ish, um, and um, what else? Uh, July or something, September with futures. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that Binance did um, to in, in the bottom of the bear market that sort of pushed things along. So I think people in the crypto space generally really appreciate that, the fact that we, we're always pushing the industry forward. So we, or at least we do our part to do that. Um, there are many other players who do that as well. So we, we want to work together to push this industry forward. So um, other than just sort of just um, putting together a really good team and then leading them forward, I personally didn't really do that much, but the team did a lot of, a lot of really hard work. Uh, okay, so what are the plans for 2020? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, 2019, I, uh, uh, to be honest, we've been really, really focused internally to building the products out. Um, so there were many, many product launches. Um, for 2020, um, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, there's still continue to be a lot of product uh, uh, building and launches. So the open platform initiative is quite key. Um, so we're, we're basically providing more and more platforms for our other business partners to enable access to crypto for the retail. So it's more, uh, before we were more like a B2C model, whereas in 2020, we're moving towards a B2B2C uh, model where we're working with other partners to enable the uh, consumers to come into crypto. Um, so we'll, we, we have a number of initiatives in that area. Uh, we continue to push in futures, which is a very low cost way of trading. Uh, it is somewhat high risk in terms of the liquidations. It requires a different mentality of trading. So you don't want to put all your, uh, all your funds in one order. So you want to split them up a little bit. But futures, uh, it, is a, it is really a much cheaper way to trade, both in terms of uh, trading fees as well as capital requirements to trade. So we're, do, uh, we're pushing futures very uh, uh, aggressively. And um, we're also doing something that other people are not doing with futures traditionally. We're enabling futures for many of the altcoins. So um, this is typically very difficult to do, but our uh, system has been relatively stable and um, we have some advances in, in terms of uh, how, to, how to handle liquidity. So uh, we're, we're doing that now. Um, we have a very large focus on global fiat expansion, so uh, penetrating uh, and covering global markets. So we want to turn on uh, fiat access in 180 different countries. And, for par uh, and very, uh, I believe a large part of this, we will have to rely on our partners. And hopefully Binance Cloud can help with that as well. So um, those are sort of the very high level plans. Um, there's a lot more details to it, but I can ramble for, I can ramble on for a long time, so I don't want to take too much time. What about personal plans for this year? Um, personal plan, um, I don't really have a lot. Uh, so my biggest goal is basically within the next couple of years, hopefully um, I, can get to my, I can get myself into an even more um, unneeded situation. So nothing depends on me. Uh, <clears throat> so then after that, I can probably relax, go travel the world, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm doing quite a lot more traveling in 2020. Um, I do plan to travel more now. I fixed my back. Um, so, um, 
Uh, but right now the travel is more uh, airport to hotel, back to airport kind of gone. So I, so I don't really do a lot of sightseeing. I don't do that much sightseeing right now. So, uh, but I think for me though, um, I, I really enjoy what's, what's, what I'm doing right now. So I do feel it's, uh, I don't feel it's really work or it's really uh, pressure. I'm pressured to do it. I'm really tired of doing it. I feel I'm really lucky to have the chance to be doing what we're doing. Uh, which is to increase uh, access to crypto, increase the freedom of money uh, for people around the world. So that's something I'm really, really energetic about doing. I'm, I just feel I just feel really lucky to be in a position to be able to do that. So for me, uh, for this year, I'll travel around the world to wherever that's required to push more adoption on crypto. Okay, so you're famously workaholic. You're also famously minimalistic. No big houses, no yachts, uh, not even a suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now that you can practically afford yourself whatever you want, I wonder what, when was the, f the last time you did something for the first time? I actually can't remember that much, to be honest. So my life's pretty simple. Uh, I haven't done anything crazy in the last couple of years. How did you celebrate the new year? Um, on New Year, I stayed home, <laughs> so I didn't go out to celebrate. <laughs> Um, actually, I slept before New Year. I slept like before 12. That's a very rare time for me. It's actually quite rare for me to sleep before 12, before midnight. But actually on that day, I got tired and just, you know, it's just another day. Um, I recently passed my birthday. I didn't celebrate either. So I had a normal dinner with the, with, the, with the people I have dinner with all the time. Um, I'm not materialistic because it's kind of hard to carry. Um, anything that's physical, anything that's like tied down, it's kind of hard, hard to carry and not mobile. Um, I like to keep mobile. I like to be able to sort of move to living in a different city every month if I want to. So that aspect of uh, 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 really appeals to me. And uh, with the shared economy, it's so much easier now, right? So we, you, you don't need a car. You, you have Uber everywhere. Um, you have Airbnbs. You have like uh, service apartments. So you don't need that. You don't, you, I don't need to buy a house. And um, I don't really, I don't like boats. Um, so if uh, I've been boat, but if I want to take a boat ride, I'll rent it. Um, you'll be fine. So I don't, I don't feel the need to own a lot of stuff to have a really complicated life. Just keep everything simple. Great, really inspiring. Okay, but we all know that you took a big risk uh, when you sold your house that you had in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. to go all in on Bitcoin. Since you're also a world-known uh, poker player, uh, I bet you knew you had a good hand, did you? <laughs> Still, anyway, that's really kind of nuts. So what made, what made you decide to take such a big risk? Sure, so uh, for me, it was actually quite easy. Um, yeah, so I did push all in on crypto in 2014. Um, and this is after Bitcoin went, uh, went, went up to a thousand dollars into the end of 2013. And it was kind of on the way down a little bit and going back and, back and, back and forth. So, um, but for me at that time, I started learning about Bitcoin in 2013. And I read the white paper, I went to a, different conf I, I went to a few different conferences. Uh, the one that was really, really uh, uh, standing out is the December di conference in Berlin. Uh, no, uh, Sorry, it was the December conference in Las Vegas in, um, um, in the US. So I went there, um, it was a very small conference, maybe about 200 people total. Um, but everyone in the crypto space today are, were there. Like uh, Charlie Lee was there, Matt Rosick was there, Vitalik was there. Um, so a bunch of people are all there. And it's the same crew, it's the same sort of people. Um, the group of people is really, really nice. And um, uh, I remember one guy teaching me about Ripple and Ripple was like pretty complicated to use. You had to set up gateways, you had to trust them, stuff like that. And the guy was teaching me about how to, how to, how to set it up. And in the process, he transferred some Ripple uh, to me. And um, when I was done, I was like, okay, now I understand how to use it. Let me transfer these coins back to you. He said, well, no, you, you can keep it. And um, um, you, can, you can use it to teach the next guy. I looked at it, I looked at it, I was like, well, uh, the co coins were at the time worth about $500, US dollars. So it's not a huge amount of money, but it's also not a small amount of money. So I, I thought that community was really, really nice. Um, so at that time, I, I had a really high confidence in Bitcoin su succeeding, in cryptocurrency succeeding. So I understood the technology, I understood the financial uh, aspect of it, and you, had, you already had a really nice community, community behind it. And also for me personally, the situation was, 
Um, I sold my house. Uh, not only did I sell my house, I also quit my job. Um, so <laughs> no house, no job. Um, uh, but I, I was only jobless for two weeks. So I was looking, I quit my job before getting a new job, but I was looking for jobs in the cryptocurrency uh, space. Um, I bumped into uh, blockchain.info very quickly and landed a job there in two weeks. So my, uh, for me, it was like, okay, I can sell my house. I, I can live without, uh, I, can, I, can, I can afford to pay rent and I can afford to take care of myself and uh, whoever else, uh, my family that I need to take care of just by, uh, just by my uh, salary. And um, even if uh, the cryptocurrency goes down, I can always go back to the banking industry and get a job there. I'll be fine. So it's not, it's not like I took a job where uh, I, uh, my living standard would be severely impacted. I was, again, I was not living luxuriously, but I was, I had a, uh, I had, I had a decent lifestyle. So it wasn't like, uh, not, it's not luxurious, but I had uh, decent food, decent place to stay, etc. So for me, the risk was totally tolerable. I know 100% that if even crypto fails, um, I can get a job in a bank. Um, it's, not a, it's not a big issue. So for different people, that risk appetite and that risk situation is different. Um, so I would not recommend people who are struggling to pay off mortgages on their house and who need, uh, who needs, who needs a guaranteed income from their investments to pay off some loan to sell their house and to go all in on crypto because crypto is highly volatile. But for me, um, so when I went in, I sold my house, bought Bitcoin. Bitcoin was $600 US dollars roughly. Uh, within about three months, Bitcoin dropped to about $200. So I lost two thirds of the house. But my lifestyle didn't get totally impacted. Um, uh, psychologically, there's an impact, but uh, I, my lifestyle didn't, didn't change that much. So, uh, and it stayed at 200 for two years. So two years later, it finally went, uh, uh, went up. Uh, but my lifestyle was still okay. So I was still doing other things and uh, things, were, things were okay. So basically, my, my advice to somebody else is that you got to look at your own situation. If, that, if, you, if, you can, if you can tolerate that kind of risk, if you can handle uh, that kind of risk, then it's okay. If not, then don't, don't push all in like that. Were you always able to handle risks? I mean, you seem such a calm person. I don't know, do you meditate or was it some learning process for you or you are born like this? So I, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm always a very calm person. So uh, um, in my working life, so in Binance, I've never shouted. I've never shouted, I've never yelled at any, anybody. I've never sort of became really sort of agitated. Um, there were times where there were very high stress. So uh, like I can tell you, Binance, it, when you're running an exchange globally, there's a lot of stressful situations with different regulations, with, uh, with security hacking, all of these situations. There were very, very high stress situations. Um, I, I'm usually very, very calm. Uh, I, have, I also have a low heart rate. So my, my, my resting heart rate is like 50 something. So, um, and uh, in my working career, uh, I, never really, I never really yelled and screamed uh, at other people either. So I have a, I have a calm demeanor. Uh, I don't know why, just sort of, that's just the personality, I guess. I don't meditate that much. Uh, I tried it. It's kind of I find medita meditation a little bit boring, to be honest. I don't need I don't I don't need it. <laughs> I'm already <laughs> I'm already very calm. So uh, I'm I'm also I'm also usually very optimistic as well. So I'm always um, I've tried many different startups um, and some a lot of them have failed. Um, but even in those situations, even 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 at the times where we have to dissolve a company, um, I was incurring debt. I know I have to pay back. Uh, and I did eventually, but at the time I remained relatively calm. So um, there's a couple of things that helped me in, in mentality wise. There's one phrase where somebody told me that had a really impact on me when, in, in my early years. So when I was younger, somebody said, hey, CZ, uh, do you know what happens when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you're walking, when you're at the bottom of your valley? So sort of if you look at life um, and you're at the bottom of the valley, uh, the original, like, let's say if you walk to the bottom of, the, of, of a valley, what do you do? Um, and the answer is pretty simple. You just keep walking. As long as you keep walking, then you eventually get out of the valley. So that was very, very useful to me. So whenever, like, when, whenever I feel like a lot of stress, I don't know why, I just keep remembering that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that story. So that, helped, that helps a lot. Um, there's many other little things I, I do to help myself, but um, yeah, <laughs> so there's a lot of different stuff. Uh, Tips from Sizi, how to stay calm in the crypto world. <laughs> well, great motto that you shared. Thank you so much. Um, are you still a coder um, within your heart? 
How much time do you spend programming nowadays? Uh, to be, yeah. So for the last year and a half or so, I have not done any coding. So um, uh, even, so I, I didn't write any code that was using Binance. So m m all, all of the Binance code base was written by somebody else. Um, so um, when Binance started, I was kind of already leaving the coding kind of uh, uh, stage. Um, whereas even in the early years of Binance, like two, like a year and a half ago, I still wrote some scripts to do some, to do some random stuff for myself. Uh, not so much for Binance, but uh, in the last year and a half or so, I haven't really, really had a lot of chance to do coding at all, uh, which is really, um, which is something I really want to go back to and try. But uh, with coding, you gotta have a chunk of time that you gotta sit down and look at a stare at a computer screen uninterrupted. Unfortunately, right now my time is really, really segmented. So like, there's a lot of interrupts. Um, I, I tell other people that now I have a memory of a goldfish. Like I can't remember anything belong, like longer than seven seconds. <laughs> so everything's like in segments. Um, but uh, it is what it is. It's it's kind of what the job is right now, and it's okay. I'm fine with it. So hopefully, in a couple of years, when things settle down, I can go back to learn learn some new programming languages and learn to code. But do you think that in the modern crypto industry, in order to found a a startup, it's better to have a programming background or an MBA? Um, I think both are okay, to be honest. I think we have seen successful ca uh, cases in both cases. Um, having a technology background really helps on the, I would say you typically want to have both, to be honest. Um, so even an MBA who, d who doesn't have a technical background, but if we could learn a simple programming language, just some basic stuff, and write a very simple program so that they understand a little bit and read a little bit about the high levels of the tech technology, uh, how to deploy servers and what, uh, how to run a cloud, um, how to, just sort of very high level stuff. Uh, having, uh, when, you run, when you start a business, uh, you, ha you are forced to deal with everything. You gotta deal with technology, you gotta deal with business, uh, you gotta deal with business models, BD, business development, uh, deal negotiations. You got to deal with marketing, you got to deal with service, customer service or post product uh, sales service. You got to deal with compliance, legal, accounting, finance, HR. So you have to deal with a lot of this, the things. Um, I would say I'm not, today I'm definitely not an expert in any of those areas. But as an entrepreneur, as, as an entrepreneur or, or like a CEO or, or a leader of an organization, you have to know a little bit in each, in each place. So I definitely come from a stronger tech background, but I've been doing startups for like, a, um, I don't know, 10, 20, 10, 15 years before I started Binance. So I do have a little bit, bit of the business acumen uh, uh, sort of through experience. Um, and then uh, the other stuff, like all the HR, admin, finance stuff, uh, they're, they're important as well. So I'm not super strong in any of those areas. So I rely very heavily on our back office uh, uh, staff for those, for those areas. So uh, I think basically you need a little bit of uh, everything uh, when you want to run a startup. Two years ago, you told us that you try very hard not to be number one because it entails a lot of problems, stress, as you said also today, especially with regulators. Uh, so do you still agree that it's difficult? Uh, do, is it still difficult for you uh, to be this number one or you just gave up and decided it's okay? <laughs> I will be. So no, actually, so... Today, I think uh, the uh, so two years ago, it was mainly the regulatory uncertain, uh, uncertainty um, uh, uh, and uh, and also not enough. Um, uh, crypto is only the beginning. Crypto uh, is not really widespread, so crypto um, still only uh, uh, reaches a very small percentage of users. So I think the situation on, the situation on, uh, on the regulatory front has changed a lot. I think today. Uh, many governments are pro blockchain, pro cryptocurrency. There, there, there are much clearer regulations on how to run a cryptocurrency exchange and what what to do and what not to do, etc. There's still a lot of room to improve, and there's still a lot of uncertainties. But today is much, much better than two years ago. So I think today it's okay to sort of push forward, get market share, and you will not be the lonely one at the top. Then all the regulators go to you. Um, but today, um, it's actually much harder to do that because there are a lot of exchanges uh, all over the world and you have to compete with literally uh, thousands to be conservative, even uh, probably more uh, exchanges all around the world. So, um, so, uh, so, t so, uh, so I think the risk of being the, only, the, the biggest exchange is, is much, much smaller now. 
but at the same time, it's much harder now to be the really big exchange. All the other exchanges are uh, competing very fiercely. Um, so I think that's changed. Um, but we're still at the early stages. We want to see more exchanges because right now, for example, all over the world, if you can see more exchanges, we can see more people coming into crypto. And most of the local exchanges will not be able to provide the full suite of products that Binance provides. For example, if you look at futures, margin, staking, lending, a lot of these products are very hard to do for smaller exchanges where they mostly focus on fiat to crypto, mostly like the local fiat to Bitcoin. And if they can do that well, they, 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 they make the cake for us bigger as well. So we encourage other exchanges to, uh, to, 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 to come in, to, to, to launch and to, uh, to, to, to run their businesses. So that's kind of the situation today. Okay, thank you very much. You are definitely one of the most famous crypto people in the world. Um, so my question is, do you like being a public person? What is the most exciting thing about this? And what is the biggest challenge for you? So um, to be honest, if I had a choice, I'll probably choose to be, um, personally, I would choose to be like not famous. But um, I think for our, like the way we started our business, we did an ICO. Um, so we had to have a public face. We were raising money from like public, right? Um, so we raised money from like 20,000 people. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so we need a public face. And for Binance to continue to grow, having a face uh, is, uh, does help. Um, I hope there. I was actually hoping there would be a better face. To be honest, uh, I don't think I'm a super good. I don't think I'm a very good public speaker. Um, I also don't think I'm a very. They're, they're much better looking people, much more polished people. But unfortunately for 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 Binance, it's me. <laughs> so so uh, Binance well, is kind of stuck with me for now. That is not true. You are a great speaker. Yeah. So public speaker. Yeah. So, but um, uh, but I think because we do hold people's, uh, we do hold custody of the funds. So Binance.com is a is a custody exchange. We hold custody of people's crypto, and having a face uh, is really really helpful for establishing that trust. That's just human psychology. I know we're in an industry that technically we don't need trust, but um, there's still a lot of trust that's needed in a lot of different places, um, and uh, also. Almost every other Binance person doesn't like to be too public. They all like to be like really, they're, they're already hands, uh, hands down uh, working on uh, delivering building products. So I'm kind of forced to be the public face. So I'll do what I can. <laughs> okay. Um, if you could clone yourself or make a digital copy of yourself and like make this other you do everything that you do now and be free to do whatever you want, what will it be? Um, oh, I would love to. Uh, yeah, well, I would love to clone uh, to make a clone to do all the work. Um, I think <laughs> I'll make a lot of clones to do a lot of work, and then we can do like I don't know ten different interviews at the same time. Um, but uh, <laughs> Great. Uh, but um, I should uh, clone myself also, as well yeah. then. <laughs> so um, so yeah, but it's not possible right now. But also, if if I really if I really freed myself up, I think most likely. I am quite interested in two other aspects. Uh, main uh, number one is um, uh, biology, actually biotech. Uh, I think as humans, as our species, uh, so one thing I'm doing right now is increasing the freedom of money, which I think will help our species to, to advance um, uh, significantly. I'm doing a little bit to contribute in that whole thing, but I think as a whole, if we can increase the freedom of money, then our species will, will advance. When our species advance on that front, then we'll have more money, more funding power to do much more research, uh, like biotech, like space exploration, um, like AI, a bunch of other things. I think Elon Musk is doing the space exploration thing. I'm actually less interested in that. I'm more interested in biotech and potentially AI. I think that in both of those areas, there could potentially be a lot of um, uh, more research and more improvements to be made. Uh, uh, I, I think I, I would want to do, there's a lot of people doing AI already, so I think I may want to, uh, if I have nothing else to do, I may want to do, like, look into biotech uh, as sort of the next uh, thing to look at, learn about, um, hope, potentially invest in a few different uh, startups or research projects, etc. That could potentially help us to understand ourselves better and cure some of the disease, diseases better, etc. So we have the coronavirus going on right now, we don't have a vaccine for it. Uh, I'm sure the vaccine will come in due time, but maybe, maybe we can help fund it uh, to speed it up and we can do more uh, genetic biogenome type of projects to understand ourselves better. So I'm kind of interested in those areas too.
Speaking about cloning, uh, it made me think that I think I've heard that you like the simulation theory. Is it true? Yes, yes. Um, so I believe 100% we're living a simulation. Well, basically 99.99999% we're living a simulation. So mathematically, it's basically 100%. And what does it mean? Like for you as a person who creates a whole empire within an industry, what does it mean that we are living in a simulation? Sure, sure. So <laughs> let me share this a little bit. Um, so the reason I believe in simulation, I believe we are in a simulation is um, the, the world we're taught in, we have, a, I don't know, a couple hundred billion years of history. And um, uh, so that's the time span that I think our universe kind of exists. And... Um, uh, if, but if you look at if I look at my life uh, when I was born, there was no running water. There's no electricity. I was born in a little village, um, and then when I was a kid, uh, so when I was a kid, I was pumping like water out of the well. Um, so uh, let, later on, we had running water, we had electricity, we had computers, we had cell phones, uh, we have AI. Uh, we now have uh, Alexa, um, all, all this all this advanced stuff. Um, but that just happened in the short history over the last forty years. And um, if, it, if, I, if I think about the next 40 years, um, would, would it happen where, uh, where, would it be possible for, for me to say, hey, I want to lie down there and I want to simulate my life again? I think we, we probably won't be able to do that. Um, and we'll, and um, there are other simulations that's going on as well. Uh, for example, we simulate, say, look, if you look at N Nintendo, Super Mario, we can simulate the guy moving forward and moving backwards. Um, the, the tricky part is I don't know what kind of simulation we're in. Are we simu being simulated by a, a, a higher being in a different dimension or are we just sitting, uh, sleeping there, uh, dreaming, uh, simulated by our, our, ourselves or our own, uh, our own kind? Um, but, um, but either way, both of those simulations are possible, are guaranteed uh, within 100 years from now. And if you look at, like, say, 100 years, let's say 500 years, Right, so in 500 years, that's that guaranteed to be possible with the speed that technology is advancing right now. And if within 500 years uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can realize that, what are the chances? This is the first 500 years within like a couple hundred billion years, right? So probably one in a billion. If you do one in a billion, then mathematically it's point zero zero nine ninety nine point nine 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 percent that we're in a simulation. And mathematically, it's basically 100 percent we're in a simulation. But more, uh, whether we're in a simulation or not, it doesn't matter too much, to be honest. Um, what's, uh, it does have some impacts on how you think about life. Um, just because we're in a simulation doesn't mean life is not important. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that if, if I die, I, I'll wake up and nothing matters. Maybe we're in that kind of simulation, but we don't know. I, at least I don't know. Um, so and maybe we die, we like Super Mario. Di Super Mario dies, but he doesn't jump out and talk to me. Um, he, the next respawn may or may not be him. We don't know. Um, so just because we're in simulation doesn't mean it doesn't matter. It still matters much, very much. So we still want to, uh, we still want to live a good life or live a meaningful life, make our contributions and do what we're supposed to do, uh, which is to, uh, what we're supposed to do as a human, at least in this simulation that I'm in, um, uh, I believe that human species are supposed to make, help other human, well, almost any animal species are designed to help other animal of the same species. So we're designed to help other people. So we, we're designed to help ourselves and help others. And what about climate and nature? Like, does it mean that actually climate change doesn't exist within the simulation theory? It probably means that it does exist. So what's, so the, the tricky part is we don't know what kind of simulation we're in. So we could be in a simulation only partially, some things are partially simulated and some things are not simulated. Um, and even if we're in a full simulation where everything's simulated, uh, the climate problem is still a problem that was thrown to us. And it's a challenge that we need to resolve. Well, we need to, we need to, we need to help solve. So even, 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 that, even if it's a full simulation, everything in the simulation still matters. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a coronavirus that matters. There's, um, there's a flooding in places, the climate changes. All of those things are challenges that's thrown our way. And we should, we should try our best to help, to help, uh, to help where we can. It doesn't mean that we're able to solve every problem. Even if you're in a game, uh, you don't solve every uh, you don't solve every puzzle. Uh, but I think uh, the, the 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 current simulation we're in, we should do our best to to, to the ability that we can. And uh, for me, it doesn't mean I will solve every problem. I'll I'll just focus on a few problems where I can make the most impact. 
So, but that's 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 how I believe. Uh, that's why uh, I do believe in simulation theory very strongly. And uh, but it doesn't. Uh, there's another aspect of the simulation theory have an impact on the way you view this world and life, uh, especially uh, with the early topic that you talked about when you when you deal with how do you deal with difficult situations, stressful situations situations etc um sometimes you, you say well you know it's just a simulation it's just a game you just you just got to keep doing what you what you're supposed to do um and there are certain parts of luck there are certain part of randomness and there are certain part of maybe design in the simulation that will that will, that will set you back um so all of those things are present but be, uh, but your role uh or at least my role uh, in here is just to do the best i can so i just keep got to keep put one foot in front of the other and keep marching forward so that simulation theory takes a much lighter uh, view. Um, oh, you know, I'm not the center of the universe, uh, but, I, I, but I'm here to do what I'm supposed to do. And let's just do what I'm supposed to do. So it makes life a lot easier, actually. That's fascinating. Thank you so much. OK, last five minutes, I wanted to dedicate to some lightning questions. <laughs> sure. Uh, not in terms of lightning networks, but in terms of flash questions. <laughs> sea or mountains? I probably choose mountains if you ask randomly like that, but I do like ocean sports as well. I do, I do like a lot of ocean sports. Okay, beer or wine? A uh, beer. St. Valentine's or a usual day? A usual working day, yeah. <laughs> I didn't doubt about that. <laughs> McDonald's or Burger King? Uh, Burger King, because at least some of them uh, accept Bitcoin or, and Binance coin. Great, okay. Black or yellow? Black. Okay, because we share the same colors within our logos, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, I have a I have a Coin Telegraph hoodie, and the colors are the color scheme is the same. Yeah. <laughs> okay, snowboard or work? Uh, I think now it's mostly work. Uh, I really I really enjoy snowboarding, but you can't snowboard all the time. You can do like a couple couple of days a year. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, the last question: simulation or reality? It's definitely simulation. Yeah, we, we are in a simulation. There's there's no reality. <laughs> Thank you so much. There is no reality, but there is CZ, the, the winner of top 100 of Cointelegraph. And I'm very happy to have passed this uh, hour with you. Thank you so much. That was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This was CZ. And check the full article on Cointelegraph.com. And don't forget to like, subscribe and huddle. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe and huddle.